Step in. <laughs> you kind of have to lean in a little bit. I see that. I know. Isn't that weird? It is weird. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome to my bare bones kitchen. We're doing Southern Sunday today, and we have my lovely friend Chad. Lean in, Chad. Okay. Because Chad is absolutely the most Southern person I am lucky enough to know, I invited Chad to show us a few things. We've had collard greens going since... 12 o'clock? 12? Yeah. 12.30? 12 something. 12 something. And so that's what's in this big lovely pot right here. And it's kind of cool because it's things that I've never known. Things I don't know anything about. I am obviously not anywhere near Southern uh, or at the South. And <laughs> I don't know how any of this stuff works. So cheers to you all. Water, by the way, we're doing water right now. Um, so we actually started this with bacon. Bacon, onions. onions and collards. And collards, and, and then we did some some uh, better than bouillon. And semi pro tip guys, better than bouillon, first of all. I wanna show them that. Better than bouillon. It is better than bouillon because it keeps <laughs> soaking. This is better. <laughs> and then, if you are a person that does bacon and stuff, but maybe you don't want to pay the price of bacon, these little guys, I don't know if you can see that, but it's bacon pieces and ends. So much cheaper. If you're not doing strips for like breakfast or BLTs or something like that, buy the pieces, guys. Cheaper. Cheaper. Still good, just bits and pieces of the stuff that they don't want to put on display. So, semi-pro tip for both of those. All right, we got our stove on. We both have our own thing going here. So, go ahead and lean in, Chad. What are you going to do? So, I'm going to make smothered chicken. Um, it's one of my favorites. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Okay. <laughs> but it is one of my favorites, uh, and it's easy to make, and cheap to make, so that's what we're doing. So we've had our, our stoves going here for a hot minute. I'm going to do grits over here, so cheesy bacon grits. We were going to do shrimp grits, but sometimes shit just don't work out, guys. That's just how it rolls. So go ahead. So we got about a half a cup of oil going in. Maybe a little more than, than a half a cup of oil, but it's okay. Always and always I'm going to put bacon in my hot pan right now. So we're going to simultaneously do this and we're going to see how it works. Go ahead. I'm going to mix all this together. All right, so we have flour and in the flour, we're going to do some garlic powder. And again, it's just going to be kind of to your taste. So if you think you need a little more, or a little less, or you like something a little more, a little less. A little ginger. Um, got some ginger powder. You might want to tap that because it's got that hole. There you go. Mm. Hand this back to me as we go. A little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon. A little shot of cinnamon. cinnamon. That's a good one. Kind of unusual, but I'm down. Smoked paprika. Smoked paprika. Just dump it all in there. Okay. It's good. Don't put it in there. <laughs> you did it all. Uh, a little bit of chili powder. Not much, so. I think too much. Pepper and salt. And I did salt and pepper the chicken thighs. We're using chicken thighs. We're not using chicken breasts. I mean, I'm sure you could use chicken breasts, but we're rocking chicken thighs tonight. Salt, guys, you see this? You see this? Mission accomplished. Got the real salt this time. Thank you, Costco. Y'all rock. All right, Chad's mixing up that flour. 
And that's just to distribute all of those spices into the flour before he dredges the chicken. That's the word we use, dredge. All right, step this way so I can go this way. Mm -hmm. It's weird to be in my kitchen with people. <laughs> That's why I went to culinary school, you know. I wanted to learn how to cook in the kitchen with other people. That's why I went to culinary school to begin with. And the other reason was because I wanted to learn about spices. spices. Kind of mission accomplished. The spices are good. They are good. That's probably getting real hot, Chad. Yeah, I know. It's getting hot. I move out of the camera all the time. I'm just trying to remember how to do this. It's good thing now. That's what, that's going to be your presentation side. So anytime you're frying anything, you want your presentation side to go down first. So it's all down first. Yes. And it's just one layer, guys. It's not the complete breading system. So the complete breading system would be flour, egg, flour, or flour, egg, panko, or flour, egg, whatever you're going to dip your shit in, okay? So it's just one step, just, just in the flour. And we got a nice big pan, got a good layer of oil in there, spices all through the flour, plus spices on the chicken. That way it gives you a good double slash whatever layer of what you got going on. Hello, everybody. Say hello when you pop on so we know you're there. And cheers. Chad's just out of camera. I don't think he's doing that on purpose. It's just no, the way I'm the not. camera's set up. Done. Getting it done. Can you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. Got a small kitchen, so we gotta work with what we got, yo. Your mama says hello. hello. Hi, Miss Gail. Hi, Miss Gail. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Oh, let's do these ones. I don't know. No, I don't want to do those ones. I don't. I don't do metal in my my coated pans. If I had a nice big cast iron pan, we'd totally be rocking those metal tongs. But we're going with these. Hello, Miss Wonderful. Chad is cooking. That's awesome. That's what Miss Gail says. <laughs> I had to break in reinforcements. My original plan failed. So thank goodness for Chad. All right, with our grits, I got our bacon almost done over here, so I'm going to pull it out now. So, Chad. Yes? What does this particular meal remind you of? This particular meal reminds me of my grandma. Of your grams? Of my grams, Aww. yes. Aww. And so not even necessarily that she made it all the time, but... Don't be telling stories because your mama's on here. She's going to know if you're lying. She's going to tell me. <laughs> but it's more or less, uh, it just reminds me of her. She was always in the kitchen um, making something very good to eat. Okay. Uh, her specialty was bread, and it warmed my heart every time she made bread because it was so good. So, yeah, it just reminds me of my grandma. I love bread. Bread is good. Bread is Chicken is good too. Bread. Oh, sourdough bread, even better. Anybody else like sourdough bread? Drop it down there. I'm turning this off for now because I know these grits are not going to take very long now that I got the bacon cooked. Looks like it's going to take a few more minutes. And yeah, all you want to do on this is brown each side for now. So basically like a golden brown. Okay. Um, and we're going to pull them off. 
but we gotta get there first. Yeah, usually takes a few minutes with the, these. Dance them in the pan, dance them in the pan. Aw, your mom says so sweet, Chad. <laughs> Think about grandma and bread, and this meal is grandma's bread, I guess. Yeah. Basically. I love it. Too early. You do flip too early. That's way too early. I know. <laughs> I'm like, don't let me be the chef over I here. Just flip <laughs> don't let me be the chef because I'm gonna be like, stop it. <laughs> don't touch it yet. I was already doing that earlier too. When he was trying to show me how to do, I've never made collard greens in my life, you guys. I think I've eaten them like twice. Like I can't even lie about that. And I'm like, okay, how do I do this? And then he's trying to tell me how. To, I'm like, that's not right. What do you mean? That's not. That's not how you do that. <laughs> I let that culinary school student out of me, you know? So did you guys have this a lot when you were a kid? Um, not a lot, but yes, we did have this. Okay. Every once in a while. Was this yes. like a, a typical dinner, or was this like a family getting together dinner? Um, no, it would be a typical dinner. A like typical a, dinner, like okay. A, a normal family, like... Household family dinner. You, you gotta get up in this camera not, a little bit. Not the whole family, but the household family. Okay. So does your mom make this? My mom has made this. Yeah. yeah. Makes it frequently. Kind of frequently. Maybe not now, but when I was growing okay, up. Okay. When yes. you were growing up, you remember this being like, for me in my house, like spaghetti or. Maybe not that frequent, but. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But it wasn't like Thanksgiving and no. frequent. No. Okay. No, it might be like a... Like a special birthday dinner, or... Come home on Sunday, and that's what gets made okay. is this, just because it's easy. Fair enough. I don't know, man. We've been working hard for a, long, a lot of hours. <laughs> Maybe it's just this. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that takes time. So apparently, guys, greens takes a while. So what do we got? Oh, yeah, Mom says she made that. And she was a great scratch cook. I love it. We do not have any cornbread. I was going to get cornbread, and I completely spaced it. So I apologize for that. I know that's like the 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 part of the meal that like seals everything together is the cornbread. And I totally dropped the ball, and that's my bad. Um, so with the the greens, we actually like just trimmed the ends off because I bought whole leaves, which was quite honestly cheaper than buying it already chopped. So, um, whereas the big huge bag would have cost me like almost five bucks, one little bundle of collard greens cost me like two bucks, less than two bucks. So it was super inexpensive. And then of course with the bacon being in the bits and ends and pieces and like the, I don't know, throwaway parts of the bacon, I guess, um, that was super cheap. And that bacon, those bacon ends and pieces will last my household a long time because I'm not using them for breakfast. But totally, guys, use them if you're doing soups or if you're using them for baked potatoes or anything mashed that's going to be, yeah, mashed potatoes, anything like that. So these are really big leaves, and you've got to clean them and get all the ooky stuff off of them. Yep. And you'll know because they, they turn into a brighter green. So for us that live here in the PNW, we get plums on our trees, and Chad was actually just asking me about this, and you know how they have like that white film on them, and if you clean them off, they turn into that shiny purple? Same kind of thing with the collard green leaves. They'll turn into a nice shiny green once you get that white stuff off and all the other weird field debris off of them. So we did that, and then chopped them up, and it was kind of like the basil, how I'll roll the basil and we chop that, but we actually just folded it in half. Probably would have worked the same way though with the basil, whereas you chop the basil, you know, like all rolled up and I always make the joke that some of y'all are gonna be better than others at rolling the basil. So same kind of thing, same concept, just chopping it up, giving it like nice long strips, but they're very tough, they're very, would you use leathery? Leathery, leathery yeah. was a really good word because they were super thick. And he's like, if we're going to do this, we got to make sure we do it like soon because they, they take a really long time to cook. And I didn't realize that and I never would have realized that because again, it goes, it goes against all of my culinary knowledge. So 
Collard greens are, are already bright, and then once you cook them for a little bit, they'll stay bright, but then once you continue to cook them the way that they're intended to be cooked, they turn into that like olive green. And again, for me, I was explaining to Chad that it like goes against everything I know because it's supposed to be this bright, vibrant green. And we tried them and they were still really good, but they didn't have a lot of flavor yet. And so that's what he told me is that they gotta cook a long time and stew a long time and all of the stuff that's in there in order to get that good flavor. And I'm super excited to try them. Um, and there we go, that's a little better. Very we're nice. Not, we're not really trying to cook it all the way through right now, anyway. Right, we're just trying to brown each side. That one's really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna say something. Actually, I'm making trustless quiche right now. Oh, that's what she says. What a chat's favorite. <laughs> that's awesome. So, welcome Rhonda. Say, so, you know, if anybody wants to say hello to Chad's mom, Rhonda is Chad's mom. Low and slow is the trick to the collard greens. Is that what that is, Rhonda? Yep. It does smell slow. pretty good. I was actually waiting for my youngest child to come down the stairs and be like, who's cooking bacon? He didn't, though. I was shocked. <laughs> That looks really nice. They're nice and really nice and tan. Love it. And then once we get these out and we get the like, it's like a gravy that goes with it. Um, I'll do the grits and then we'll take a picture when everything's all done, just so you guys know. So in the meantime, I just want to remind everybody. Thank you for keeping on sharing and joining us every week or me every week. Chat's just a bonus tonight. We do have our, our awesome limited edition Bare Bones Kitchen mug, the scary Halloween mug with the blood dripping down and the ax that you can win one time only. This is, this is a very limited edition because it's just one. Um, I haven't put any cream and grits yet. Just calm down, mama, calm down. I haven't even made the grits, just did the bacon for them. Uh, Limited edition bug. So if you cook something that is on my Facebook or my Facebook page or my YouTube page, and you post it and you tag Bare Bones Kitchen in it, that will give you an entry. Also, if you've ordered anything, shirts, mugs, which I still have available, you will also be entered if that is your wish. You just have to let me know. So past, present, order. Let me know if you want to be entered into the contest for the limited edition mug. And then I'll make you step in here and say hello to everybody for a minute. Because i got to get... Hello. 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 How is everyone tonight? Hopefully everybody is good. Um, once again, if you need a simple meal, this is pretty easy. It's not really that hard. The chicken's not. This takes a long time. It's not difficult though. It's, just, it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. This is our other giveaway. Let me get that a little closer to the camera. My lovely friend Gail at Sassy Sissy Boutique made this beautiful, beautiful apron as a giveaway gift. And how you do that is you share. Anything that you see here or on my page, you share. And you have to tag Bare Bones Kitchen in it. And she's going to pick the lucky winner at the end of the month. So it's only until the end of this month. So we have two giveaways for the month of October, but through September, if I'm making any sense at all. Because sometimes I don't. That's how it rolls. Sorry, guys. So anything you do through the end of this month is going to be the giveaway at the beginning of October. Yeah. There we go. That's what I got. Let's see what people are saying, Chad. Got people saying stuff here. Aw, your mama says that. <laughs> Do you love that apron, men? There's an entry for each share. I have to I have to be reminded of this. There's an entry for each share. 
So every time you share, you get entered. So share. <laughs> I love it. All right, are we golden brown here yet? Almost. Yeah, I'm be. so impatient. I don't even know how I cook because I'm so impatient when it comes to stuff like this. Oh, that one's nice. There you go. All right, so if you're just joining us, we've got some collard greens here. We've got some fancy, not really that fancy, but really delicious chicken dish that Chad is making. And I have a pan kind of warmed up still for grits. So we're doing bacon, cheesy bacon grits over here. Uh, we got collard greens over here that have been cooking since like noon. And we have some chicken that's just getting browned. And it should be a fairly simple recipe. We did miss out on the cornbread though. Make sure you say hello when you drop in. Yeah, half cup of milk. And we need milk? Yeah, half cup. Oh yeah, I can need it for that. Yeah. And we need it for this over here. Because gosh, if I don't put this cream in here, your mama's going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> so Rhonda, what's the ratio of cream? I have to use a measuring cup because I don't know how to do grits. I'm not very good at eyeballing it. So I do know, because Chad told me, this is what Chad told me, okay? Grits is like rice from the south, right? Yep. Okay. It's like the rice of the south. Yes. Oh, rice of the south. Okay, so rice is a two to one ratio. So for every one cup of rice you have, you have two cups of liquid. So I'm measuring because I can't eyeball grits. I can eyeball rice like there's nobody's business, you know, but. I can't eyeball grits because I'm not familiar with it. So what is the suggestion? Should I do like half water, half cream or milk? I do have some heavy whipping cream in my fridge. Okay. A long on. Oh, okay. So with the cream, three grits. Sending Chad's mom over to handle both of y'all. Great. Thanks, Branda. Thank you. <laughs> half water, half cream. So am I using cream or am I using milk? Because I can do either or right now. Somebody's laughing at me. They're like, what the hell? She went to culinary school. How did she not know how to do this? We don't get to cook grits, okay? Gosh, guys. I'm straight up relying on... The oatmeal guy, okay? I'm relying on the oatmeal guy. What else do I do here? Way more than four tablespoons, but we'll work with it. We can pull it out. Let me pull some of it out. Just grab a bowl. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna take away some of this oil. Oh no, we want a glass bowl. Just draining off some of this oil from cooking the chicken. Because we don't need this much oil. That should be good. I don't know if that's still a lot. Still Otherwise, good. our gravy esque stuff is going to be way too greasy. This is true. Way too greasy. I don't know a lot about southern cooking, but I know that. Some people like grease, though. So. Well, I, I know this, man, but, you know. All right. There you go. All right. So then... So I'm going to do half of this and half of that. All right, go ahead. Sorry. I'm trying to follow your mom's directions, too, yo. <laughs> We're put the onions in here and brown them. I'm the only one that eats grits in my house, Rhonda. Putting the onion in there and what? To brown it. Oh, okay. To brown the onion. I missed that part, sorry. No, you're good. You missed that part. I want to make sure everybody else heard it too. Damn, it smells like Lake Fair up in this bitch. 
You wouldn't know what lake bear smells like yet, Chad. I wouldn't, you're right. You're, you're not quite a Washingtonian just yet, just because you have the driver's license. <laughs> so lake fair is our annual fair that we have down at Capitol Lake. Okay. Um, and they canceled it this year, thank you COVID. It's been literally going on my entire life. I don't even know when lake fair started, but it's a big to do around here because we're such a boring town that it's like the one thing that we do around here is lake fair. And when you go down there, if you enter into the right area, um, you'll walk into the food area. Mm -hmm. So they have like almost a food court there. And there's a thing, I think it's the Lions Club that puts it on. And they have like a hamburger stand. And so when you walk down into Lake Fair, into that part, either if, as you're coming in or as you're going out, it smells just like onions. They're called demo burgers. Why? I don't know, but it smells amazing. Anybody who lives in Olympia, come on, Miranda, I know you know what I'm talking about. Miss Gail, you probably know too. All right, what we got? All right, so. I'm just talking too much, no, sorry. You're good, you're good. Letting these cook a little bit, get browned. Sweat them down. Is that what it's called? Yes, sweating them. That is the technical term? Technical term, sweating. Isn't Colon that gross? Is that the and it kind of smells like sweat too, which is even more funny. It does actually, yeah. Uh... That's why when teenage boys like my son come around you, or probably what you did to your mom. Probably. Because you didn't wear deodorant because you were too proud. Yeah. yeah. Sweating, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Say we we always we moms always say you smell like an onion, like I did with Zane the other day. Like you smell like an onion, boy. He said, "I know." Go put deodorant on. <laughs> he said, ass. "I know." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take and add some of this flour mixture. Maybe a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, so we're soaking up some of that grease. Okay. Yep. I got you. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. And you want one of these? Yeah. That'll work better. Oh. I don't want your finger there. I don't. Yeah, that's good. Can you get. So we're making a roux. That's what that's called. Two and a half cups of cold water. Cold water. We're doing cold water? Yeah, okay. cold water. All right. All right. Yeah. Helps when I put it on cold, I can tell you that much. All right. Acclimate it. We acclimate it that way so it doesn't get all lumpy. I don't know if that's what you guys do, but that's what I do. <laughs> I don't even know if that's two and a half cups. I'm not even going to lie. Your mom says lots of onion. We did like a half of onion. Isn't that okay? Is that okay? Oh, I'm over here slacking. I'm worried about what you think. Rhonda, I'm worried about you what you think. <laughs> We're going to need like a half a cup of milk. So it's really like an onion gravy. Yeah. Okay. It's really like an onion gravy. Okay. And... With some spices. Yep. It's looking pretty thick. Do we need to thin it out a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Let me add some more milk here. Just so we know, we got this on a medium heat. Yes. <coughs> Cream, not milk. Your mom's yelling at me already. <laughs> this is Spare Bones Kitchen. Sometimes people don't have cream. We gotta use milk. Exactly. <laughs> This 
stuff too thick? Mm. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Gonna get me in trouble with your mama, Chad. Jeez. She'll be all right. <laughs> She'll be all right. Forget what it's like to be a backup dancer for other people. <laughs> Especially when their mamas are yelling at me. I don't know what it's like to be the star of a show, so you know. Perfect. Then we're we're one and the same. Alright, what's another fun story you got, Chad? Another fun You story? gotta have another fun story. Okay, so this one's all about your grams. That's why you picked this. Put me on the spot. I, know, I am putting I'm you on the spot. On the and spot. your mom's up there too, know, and I'm you know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that's about right now. That's a good consistency. Alright. And as it cooks, it's going to get thicker, you know? Yes. Okay. Which is the point. I that's know. called smothered chicken. Oh, duh. I should have known that, huh? But now, we can put this back in here. All right, so we're putting chicken back in. After we browned it, we made the gravy. We're adding the chicken back in. And you're going to let it cook for like 20, between 20 and 30 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes, really, but. So are we cooking it until the chicken is cooked? Yes. Okay. So it should be about 20 minutes or so, 20 okay. 25 minutes. I better turn this back on, huh? If I think I'm going to make grits for everybody. Yeah, you might want to do that. I don't know. Now I'm scared to. Your mom's going to yell at me if I don't do it right. <laughs> Where's the love at? I know, right? They're getting married over here, guys. Sorry. So you just leave it that way? You don't even flip it over and, like, cover no, actually, everything? No, I need a top. Oh, you need a top? Yeah, okay. if you have one. Um, top works. It could just be a pan if you have a pan. Well, that's what I usually use for that. I don't think I have a top that's big enough. Yeah, you're a little light. Yeah, you that one. That's why I use this good old pizza pan. That's why I keep this horrible thing around. All right. So we're good with that? Yep. And it doesn't have to be seal tight? Yep. Just, okay. Yep. All right. Just covered. Hey, you're the cook tonight. I don't just know what to covered. tell you. Okay. We're just getting this going. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, it's fine. What do we got over here? Grand's Thanksgiving dinners. I'm supposed to ask you about Grand's Thanksgiving dinners. That's what your mom wants to know. She wants you to talk about that. All right. Thanksgiving dinners are actually a, a big to do. A big to do? A big to do. Okay. Yes. I can pick um, that up. There's in the lots camera, and lots of food. Um, lots and lots of food. But my grandma makes the uh, absolute best homemade mashed potatoes ever. Um, and that was probably my absolute favorite thing about Thanksgiving was her mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes? Yes. All right. Um, unfortunately, my grandmother is not able to cook anymore because she now has dementia and... I bet so, she wants to cook, though. She probably does want to cook. <laughs> I'm sure she would love to cook, but unfortunately it can't happen because well, yeah. of medical issues. But right. other than Thanksgiving, there's just a lot of food. Like Just a lot of food? A lot of food. Is it a lot and of this kind of food? And everything was made from scratch. I don't well, think anything ever came that was pre-made or... I don't even know how y'all have fast food restaurants down there. Because who in the hell wants to eat that when you can go home and make food? Right. <laughs> but I guess that kind of goes for everywhere. True. True. It does. Because it's convenient. It is convenient, yeah. 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 Especially if you work a lot of hours during the day, you don't want to go home and cook. True story. I know, I don't. Yeah. I know, and you hardly ever cook because you I come know. to my house. I come to your house, exactly. <laughs> How are you going to do this? I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess I'm just going to dump this now. One cup of uh, water and one cup of heavy whipping cream in here. And then I'm going to measure out my one cup of grits because I can't eyeball that. 
And I have a half cup here, so don't freak out when I put it in here twice. Do I want to mix everything? Yeah, Are you yeah. sure? I mean, you don't want to lump up like that. It'd be a big lump. I know that. It is, like I said, I it's have like cooked rice. grits a couple times per the instructions on but the it, container chat. It's not exactly like rice, but it is like rice. It's rice you can put in, you don't have to stir away, but. Otherwise, See, I suppose if you weren't here telling me what to do and I was trying to make this on my own, I would have done the bacon and then thrown the dry grits on top of the bacon without taking the bacon out. And then I would have like browned the grits a little bit and then tossed the liquid on top of it because that's my instinct. And then topped it off with the cheese. It could have worked. But it could have. But that's not, not like, how I'm supposed to do it. Not have like a... It might be a, a whole nightmare mess. Yeah, it can. And that's for me what cooking is all about, especially when I'm on camera, because if I mess up, that just proves that this is not a fancy cooking show. This is just me in my kitchen with maybe True. a friend every once in a while. True. And sometimes we screw up. It does happen. And it's okay. It is. Because yes. sometimes you can still salvage that. That and sometimes there's just people that will eat it regardless. That's true, like you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'd have been like, this is not grits, but I don't care, I'm going to eat it anyway. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great. You guys know that's why I keep him here, right? Keep him here because I know he's going to eat it no matter what I cook him. And that is not a joke, you guys. Like, straight up a couple weeks ago, I thought I needed to barbecue something <laughs> after him and I were like, knocking back a few. I don't even know what happened in my grill. Not a clue. Lifted up the lid, straight charcoal across. Just a bunch of chicken that looked like charcoal. He sat there and ate it. He literally ate it. And I'm like, you do not have to eat that. I will make something else. <laughs> like, I literally, again, not a grill master. Not a grill master. Usually I can get by on my grill, but not a grill master. It was just the outside that was burnt. Oh, the inside was, was fine. Horrible. No. I would never eat that. If that came to me, I would be like, no, 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 you need to step back. But you did eat it, though. I did not eat that. You didn't eat it? No, you were the, literally the only one that ate it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> literally the only one that ate it. It's food. Well, and that's how you felt, I guess. Yeah, basically. Not how I was feeling. It's... I would have eaten dry toast over that. Why? Yeah. It was horrible, that's why. Dry toast is disgusting. Do you not remember my shame? Oh my had... gosh, I can't believe this happened. Yes, I do. <laughs> and then how Zane called them pucks. Pucks, yes. Pucks. Zane called them pucks. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is getting thick. Show everybody. Getting thick. Getting thick. All right. Better stop taking it off the heat, though, huh? She's going to send me some grits soon. Okay, I'm going to count on it. Because I'm the only one that eats them. Well, besides Chad. And Jonathan would eat up anything when they, when you guys were growing up. Yep. So you and Jonathan were both garbage dumps? Basically, yeah. Uh, basically. That's perfect. I love it. These really don't take very long, you guys. No, not at all. Even with the, the fancy schmancy uh, oatmeal guy. Okay. It's getting super thick now. <coughs> they look delicious. I can tell you that damn much. They do look really good. I'm you scared because I don't know. I'm like, do I? Do yeah, I? Do I? I? Now I'm second guessing myself. Because they'll thicken. Right. More they sit there anyway. And so. I'm gonna dump bacon back in yep. here. Some of that oil back in there too. Thank you. And did I pull the cheese out? I pulled the cheese out. I pulled the cheese out and then I put the cheese back in. I'm just using what I have. It is not cheddar. It is a Mexican blend. Is it cheese? It doesn't it's just cheese. Yep, just cheese. That's maybe a quarter cup. I like them cheesy, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. 
And again, when you're the only one in your house that eats them, you can make them however the hell you want. Exactly. All right, guys. I think we're good for now. Ooh, those look really tasty. Ooh, good stuff. Good stuff. So thank you for joining us. We will post a picture as soon as this is done. We're going to do a nice little picture of everything. Thank you for joining me in my Bare Bones Kitchen with my lovely guest, Chad. I appreciate all of you. Join me again on Wednesday because I will not be doing Monday Morsels tomorrow. Um, don't forget to post your pictures and tag Bare Bones Kitchen in the pictures so you can be entered to win the drawing of the cup. And don't forget to share the videos so you can be entered for the apron. Love you all. See you on Wednesday.